Hey y'all, it's Amanda. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to start a, another weekend vlog. I didn't really plan to vlog this weekend, but it's going to work out that way. I think that's the best way to talk about some reading updates, Bible, chit chat. I finished Romans. I want to chat a little bit about it and what I plan to read next in my Bible reading. And what am I currently reading? Uh, I got a book in the mail this weekend. I want to chat about it. I don't know, just random updates. Got to do some cleaning this weekend. Hopefully this will be some motivation for time lapse. Get a little workout in. Hey, we here. All the good things. Let's go. All right, y'all. So this weekend, today is Saturday, and we're at the last weekend of July. I hope y'all have had a really great reading month. I finished Romans this week, so I'm going to chat about that here in a minute. But currently, I am reading uh, Break of Day by Colleen Coble. This is book three in the Annie Peterson trilogy, and I'm loving it. I've only got one hour left of the audiobook. The audiobook is the way to go. This is a great romantic suspense series trilogy. I really can't say much about book three. But yeah, it's just, it focuses around this girl, Annie, and you know, it was like a second chance romance for her and John at the beginning of the series. And Annie has this young girl, her daughter, uh, and Kylie, I'm trying to remember names, <laughs> but um, there's a lot of stuff going on, like internal family drama there. Uh, her husband has passed away in the beginning of the series. And you know, John kind of comes back into town. He's suspected in some cases and things like that in the very beginning of the series in book one. And you know, they, He's trying to clear his name on that. And then he, I'm trying to remember everything, but he uh, starts working things out again with Annie. Annie is a law enforcement ranger. They have campsites where people end up going missing. Have people who have been killed there and they try to work the cases. There's all that stuff going on. And then we have this kind of side story in the beginning of the series where her sister has had been kidnapped when they were young. That's kind of how it opens up. So we see a lot of different plot points in this series. Book three kind of opened up with this side character um this girl who is pretty much looks like she's getting kidnapped on a boat and they kind of work some stuff out with that case and there's some more of the internal family drama going on so yeah it's just a really great time i'm loving it really great romantic suspense series i highly recommend it so if you haven't seen i will link my reviews for both books down below just so you can read through them the first two books and uh, all that stuff so yeah i'll let you know how i feel about it first book i gave four stars second book i gave five stars i think this one's kind of in that four to five star range really enjoying it so that's the reading update for right now now i did get a book in the mail yesterday i want to share with you guys i'm on the launch team for this and normally i don't do launch teams much depending on if the author reaches out and that kind of stuff or if it's like something i really really want to do for reviews i typically do some the bethany house and reveal blogger programs before this book i am on the launch team for it because Tony Shallow, you know, she's my favorite, right? Um, just finished up the love script. It was amazing. And next coming out for this year is You Make It Feel Like Christmas. We love to see it. So um, we are being blessed with two Tony Shallow books this year. And I'm super excited to read this one. It's relatively short. I think it's 170 something pages. Oh, at the end, we have an excerpt for Sarah Monson's book coming up. Hey, All's Fair and Love and Christmas is the cover for it. That's another one of my anticipated releases. I did not choose that one for review this time, but I, I pre-ordered it. So, yeah, I'll be reading it. Uh, I, I'm super excited. Ooh, I can't wait. I'm going to read that excerpt too. <laughs> read the synopsis for it so y'all can kind of get an idea of what's coming up. Okay, are y'all, I ain't ready for Christmas just yet. But I love the Christmas reads that come out. Usually Christmas reads release in September, and I think that's so that people can kind of get ready for the Christmas season, get their books in, ordered, and ready to read. Most wonderful time of year for everyone except Star Lewis. As if going home for the holidays, jobless and single wasn't bad enough, she's dragged into a holiday season full of activities, leading up to her sister's uber romantic Christmas Eve wedding to her ex-boyfriend. So Star's our main character. Her sister's getting married to her ex-boyfriend. Uh-oh, we got some tea. Uh, but when her brother's best friend, Waylon, attends the family Thanksgiving, attends their family, family Thanksgiving, I can't read. She starts to wonder if maybe coming home for Christmas isn't so bad after all. Okay, so we got a new guy. Her brother's best friend. So it's a brother's best friend romance, Waylon. Okay, we'll see. Uh, as Star finds the perfect distraction in helping Waylon make over his late mother's Christmas shop. The most wonderful time of the year works its magic and the spark between them grows. But with the holidays fast approaching, Star must decide what she wants out of life after the gifts are unwrapped and the ornaments are put away to go back to New York City or to open her heart to a love that will last beyond Christmas Day. Yes, girl. So, um, I love this cover. Isn't it just 
gives all of the vibes we need for Christmas. I love this cover so much, okay? Yeah, this morning I've just been kind of sitting here drinking my coffee. I'm making another pot of coffee because I had the first cup, now I need a second cup, okay? <laughs> um, you hear my, if you hear background noise, my kid, he's just chilling over here. Uh, but we have school starting next week, so I've got to get this house cleaned up a little bit, all the things. It was tax-free weekend this weekend. I'm not going shopping or nothing. I ordered stuff online, so hey, that's me. Um, but anyway, uh, I've been working in my planner a little bit just trying to figure out what videos I want to do coming up so I've got to film this weekend my cozy mystery recommendations video I do have all of my notes for it done so that's great I need to film a wrap-up at some point but that's probably gonna be next week because honey I'm down to the wire I do my wrap-ups like last day what did I read you know I try to really go to the end of the month so Definitely this month I'll be doing like a rom-com vlog as I read some of those. I probably will try to do five-star prediction wrap-up video because I think this weekend I'm going to try to read The Masterpiece by Francine Rivers. And I think this will make the last book like complete of the five-star predictions the last time I did it. So yeah, I'll try to do that. And then what else? Read a little bit more in my Bible, trying to figure out what I want to read next. I read Romans. I may go into Corinthians and Philippians. Those are the two I was thinking about doing. So I wrote those down and, oh, that's right. Fall, am oh, I saying fall predictions? <laughs> almost said that. Fall anticipated releases. Okay, I've got a graphic ready with, uh, I think it's 11, okay? Because that's how many books I could fit on the little Instagram square. It was 11 and that's how many I had. Now my spring, winter, spring anticipated releases, y'all, it's like two pages. It's almost, almost two pages on Instagram. So yeah, there's a lot of great books coming out in January and February and up through April, but specifically January and February. Oh my goodness. So, um, I cannot wait. We've got some Laura France, Sarah Sundin, uh, Jennifer Dibel. They're releasing some, and that's just the ones off the top of my head. Nicole Deese is in April. We have so many great releases coming out early next year. But first, we got to talk about the fall releases. I will be talking about those soon. This is a long intro, my bad. Just chit-chatting. My coffee's done. I'm gonna go get it in a minute. Um, but yeah, I want to do a fall anticipated releases video. I haven't done hardly any anticipated releases this year. There's any videos for that. I want to try to do more of those whenever I can. I just didn't get to this summer or anything like that. We're gonna talk about romance here in a minute, but let me get my coffee. All right, so I got my coffee, and let me just say, your girl found pumpkin spice creamer already. What? It was the pumpkin munchkin from Dunkin' Donuts. And then International Delight had the pumpkin spice. I know they ain't the greatest creamer for you, but hey, they taste good, let's just say. So um, this will be very fitting, this cup. Don't spill it, the gospel changes everything. Got this from the Daily Grace Company a while back. So yeah, we here, got the coffee. I haven't had breakfast this morning, so forgive me for any brain fog or less, less than energy. <laughs> I'm pretty high energy though. So anyway, um, I did finish reading Romans and I'm just gonna kinda do a quick flip through here. Let me show y'all. Okay, so here's the front. You can pause at any time to kinda see, but these are just some of the notes that I took. Sorry if it's a little shaky, but you can pause to read the notes if you'd like, kinda see what I've highlighted. But here's Romans one and two. And then I had, here's three and four. And then five, six, seven. Eight, nine. 10, 11, rest of 9, 10, 11, and then 12 and 13, and like I said, you can pause at any time just to kind of see what I've done. Uh, I'm going to talk about some of this stuff, 14 and 15, and then 16, so yeah. That was just a really quick flip through of notes that I made in Romans. I want to do like a separate video all about Romans by itself, but I'm gonna fit it into a vlog because I love to just like have this impromptu chit chat with you guys that feels more vloggish than just an official video. So we're gonna do like since it's the weekend too, it's, it fits. I do also have my notebook here that it is well with my soul notebook. Love this so much. I've been taking some notes. All right, so I did like a little Romans thing where I wrote everything about like what it was the Romans about. And first, just to talk about Romans, I'm gonna be looking at my notes by the way. So Romans is a book that was written by Paul, okay? It's a letter to the Romans written by Paul. And if you don't know anything about Paul, his name used to be Saul and he used to persecute Christians, right? He was all like in the Pharisees. He's someone who persecuted Christians. And he went from doing that to preaching the gospel because of an encounter he had with Jesus. 
and he this is his third missionary journey from the notes I found and he's seen a lot of the early Christian struggles he's right into this church he hasn't been to yet but he He's just trying to give some basic truth and understanding about righteousness, salvation through Jesus Christ. And he, he's writing this letter to the church at Romans, in Romans, and he highlights the problem of sin in this. We are getting introduced to what is the solution to sin, and it's Jesus Christ, right? He introduces us to the basic foundations of faith in the Christian faith, why we need Jesus. It's very theologically rich, in my, in my opinion. It's just... You know, uh, what does it mean to be a true Christian is discussed in here, how we are sinners and how can we be saved through Jesus Christ and how are we supposed to live uh, as Christians uh, when we are being persecuted in those and how are we supposed to respond to those things and just that underlying message of salvation, right? And so Christ is the justification for our sin. All of this is discussed in this. It's wonderful. And so we have this central theme of righteousness of God and the salvation that's available to us through Jesus Christ. And I've never read this all the way through. And I was emotional reading some of this. I will probably, I hope I don't cry, but it's hard not to when you talk about the gospel. It just really impacts you, especially being in such a beautiful way because I know that what Jesus did for us and I think about my previous sin and my, just before I came back to know the Lord and just everything that he rescued me from, he can do it to you. He can do it for you too because if he can rescue me and save me and get me through what I've been through, honey, he could do it for anybody, okay? So like I said, um, he had not yet met the people here at this church. He had not been to Rome yet. He really wanted to go to Rome. And this, just the context from what I was researching, these letters, when they would have been received, would have been read out loud all the way through. I was watching Coffee and Bible Time. They had a really great video on Romans. I will link those down below. And she was talking a lot about how um, you know, hey, this, this, if you think about it, this was read out loud to the people at that time. And I thought that was so interesting. She said, you know, just think of how profound, read this out loud to yourself. It might take an hour to read all the way through, maybe two hours, but to read it out loud, you're really soaking in the words, right? So that's amazing to think about. Like I said, Paul, he was formerly known as a Pharisee and he was, Saul was his name. And so then he became a Christian of the and preaching the gospel and he started planting these churches because of this encounter he had with Jesus and you know think about that again I always think about that with Paul like if the Lord can change him someone who really who was persecuting Christians I mean he he has that availability to all of us to change us right in no matter what our sin and he, he God makes that available to us through Jesus so Paul started planting these different churches and preaching the gospel and so Paul would write these letters to these different communities uh, like Corinthians that's another one and uh, Philippians and then so here we've got Romans and so I'm sorry being long-winded but I'm just trying to like give context as best I can for those that may not have read this and so you know he's wanting to encourage people in their faith and where Romans comes in and he was writing not just to the Jewish people he was writing to Gentiles and Jews and he wrote this letter so everyone could become unified in one under Jesus and this is just the fullest explanation and in this book this is truly like a great full explanation of the gospel the good news about Jesus his life his death and his resurrection and so really chapters one through four reveal God's righteousness five through eight creates a new creates this new humanity nine through eleven fulfills God's promise to Israel and then 12 through 16 unifies the church. And I got that from the Bible Project. I will leave that down below, um, that video. I don't know if you all are familiar with them, but they have really great resources. They explain it a lot better than I could. They have drawings and it just, it just really puts it into perspective. There's two videos on Romans I really enjoyed watching there. So I will leave those down below, but um, some of these notes are from the video. Obviously, you can tell, you know, I did pull some notes from different things, um, but I want to just share what stood out to me personally. And so Paul, he's just really explaining how, you know, Jesus is the risen king of all the nations. He addresses all these different key Christian points, which we'll get to in a minute, and just practical teachings of being a Christian. And so the first few chapters, really, Paul is establishing that all people, Jews and Gentiles, are guilty of sin. We have all fallen short of the glory of God. No one can earn our, their salvation through works. Now, in the middle, Paul is explaining righteousness and how that comes through faith in Jesus. And then we talk about how his death on the, on the cross atones for our sin. And through him, 
people can be justified and reconciled with God. And, uh, you know, he discusses the struggles of a sinful nature in life and then the spiritual life. He concludes this book with, you know, how, ways to live the Christian life, emphasizing love and unity and serving one another. He talks about also being patient with others who may have a weaker faith than you and to strive for this peace and harmony in the church. And just some of my notes I've wrote down here, okay? Just sharing all of my heart there. And now I'm going to kind of look at what I've highlighted here. So some of the scriptures that really stood out to me, and the first one was Romans 1, 16. The righteous shall live by faith is the headline. And it says, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith, from faith for faith, as it is written, the righteous shall live by faith. Amen. I love that because it's just, again, he is laying this foundation for discussions on faith and God's grace in achieving salvation. And I, I love this, you know, talking about the gospel and we're not ashamed of the gospel. Um, you know, uh, God has this salvation to everyone who believes available to them through Jesus, through his son, Jesus Love this. First chapter, he also talks about how humanity has failed to honor and worship God. They've turned things into idols and things. And how many times do we do that? How many things can be turned into an idol? Even books sometimes, right? So, um, you know, just have to really be mindful of those things and remember the importance of Jesus and our faith in him. Now we're going to chapter two and some things here I've I notated was this is um, just talking about the universal accountability of both Jews and Gentiles and those who pass judgment on others they are without excuse because they're guilty of the same sin. So he's talking about, we don't need to be judging other people because he says, therefore you have no excuse, oh man, every one of you who judges for in practicing judgment on you, you condemn yourself because you, the judge, practice the very same things. Yeah, um, that's convicting. You want to talk about the conviction I've had in this chapter? Yes. Um, how many times do we find ourselves judging other people? I mean, honey, we have, and we have no room to judge, right? So uh, it's just another one of those conviction moments of, okay, I need to work on my faith. <laughs> so, chapter three, the righteousness of God through faith. And this is where in chapter three, verse 21, I'll just read it. But now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law, although the law and the prophets bear witness to it. The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe, for there is no distinction. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, who God put forth as a propitiation by his blood to, receive, to be received by faith. This was to show God's righteousness because in his divine forbearance, he has passed over former sins. It was to show his righteousness at the present time so that he might be just and the justifier to the one who has faith in Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> That's all I got to say because, yes, we have all fallen short, right? But Jesus is there. He is the one who died on the cross for our sins and gives us that salvation in him. He forgives us. Um, just like he said, forgive them and they know not what they do. I don't even have words for it, honestly. It's just so impactful to me, my heart. One, two, number four, okay. And I think even a little bit of three, but there were some discussions here that Paul saying, hey, we receive salvation by faith in Jesus and not our works. And I wrote down, faith in, our faith in Jesus leads to that transformed life. And faith is the unifying factor between the Jews and the Gentiles here. So we talked a little bit about Abraham and his righteousness was not on works, but on his faith in God, right? And so, um, yeah, he did not weaken in faith is another thing. It's a promise realized through his faith, you know, for the promise to Abraham and his offspring that he would be heir of the world did not come through the law, but through the righteousness of his faith. Amen. That's such a great example for us to look back at Abraham from the New Te from the Old Testament. In chapter 5, justified by faith while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Yep, there we are. There it is. Chapter 5, verse 6. For while we were still weak at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person one would dare even to die. But God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. Amen. I mean, you think about what he did for us, honey. 
I mean. Six and seven talks a lot about being set free from sin. Sin has no dominion over us. The free gift of God is eternal life in Jesus. I mean. Eight. Uh, life in the spirit. I love this part. I love this one. I love this one. Eight, nine, y'all are my favorite part of Romans, truly. Um, and really all of this is great, but there's just something about these, this section that got me really emotional. So I'm going to try to read it. How many? Paul points to Jesus as the source of deliverance from sin and the hope for victory over its power. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ. The Holy Spirit's presence confirms our adoption as God's children. We may have suffering in life, but nothing will separate us from Christ. We are set free indeed. And those, that's what I wrote over here in the column. And so just some of the scriptures that stood out to me. Chapter 8, verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law weakened by the flesh could not do by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin. He condemned sin in the flesh. Amen. And then down here, down here to nine, it says, You, however, are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If in fact the spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is life because of righteousness. We skip down here to verse 18. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. And what that really stood out to me, let me read it again. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. The sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is going to be revealed. Honey, when we get to glory with the Lord, honey, this top stuff on earth ain't even going to matter, is it? All this suffering we went through in whatever you have gone through, trauma in your own life, it's not worth comparing. See that glory revealed when we get to get to heaven with the Lord. Like... I just think about how a lot of times we grumble with things and in this like spirit of complaint all the time and you're going through a season of suffering or struggles or tr whatever you've been through. Think about like the struggles of my son and his autism and there's everything that we're going through with that and, and just it, it's all okay at the end of the day because Jesus saves us. He is there. He is protecting us. He is with us and um, nothing's going to separate us from him. At the end of the day, we're set free by him. And even when we don't know what to say in our prayers, that's the next part of this. The Holy Spirit will intercede for us, even if we don't have the words in our prayers. There's sometimes you just, the Lord knows what we're going through. He knows in our hearts, even when we don't know what to say, the Holy Spirit's going to intercede in that. Um, where's that scripture? Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we don't know what to pray for as we ought. But the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. I truly feel that at times. You know, there'll be times you're just crying out to the Lord and you don't even know what to say, but he knows internally what you're going through. I hope it's coming across. I feel like that's a lot of random thoughts. I'm just saying, <laughs> I hope this is coming across. I don't know. I don't know. Just kind of sharing my heart a little bit. Um, half this vlog is Romans. Okay. <laughs> Next scripture here. And we, that I highlighted, and we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. For those who are called according to his purpose. Amen. The Lord's working everything together for our good. He wants good things for us. There is this everlasting love. And it says again, if God is for us, who can be against us? Amen. He is always for us. He wants these good things for us. And I just pray that each and every one of you can know him, do know him, and trust in him because it's the best thing you'll ever do. I mean, in my own, own life, I think back to all of, and I have a faith video where I talked a little bit about it, but I think back to like 17-year-old Amanda and... Just think back to 17-year-old Amanda who went through a lot of different things in life with these friends I had that were not who I needed to be friends with and mistakes were made right from 17 to 20, early 20s, you know, and until I came back to know the Lord and I think about how he I always say this, he protected me in times that I didn't even realize it. He was working even when I didn't see it. And 
I'm telling y'all, he is there. He is with you even when you don't see it. He is working. And that really gets me because I think about my younger self and who I am today. I'm 33 years old. And it's like, look at where we look where we are, Amanda. Look where we are, young Amanda. If I could talk to her today. If I could talk to her today. Okay, let me I need to. If I can talk to her today, I would tell her, look, honey, it's going to be okay. Everything's going to be okay. He is with you. You need to see it. You need to see it. And I didn't see it. Didn't want to see it. <sighs> okay, I'm here. <laughs> but truly, I didn't want to see it, y'all. And the Lord really, truly worked during that time in my life. And then when I finally, like, when it hit me like a ton of bricks, when I finally got just got on my knees and said, Lord, thank you for what you have done. I just, I truly appreciate him. And, and when I realized it, it was just this moment of true salvation and freeing that freedom in Christ, you know, no matter what you have done, he is with you and, um, he forgives you and he wants these good things for you. And I, I guess that's probably all I need to say because I was believing here, money, you know, it's in Romans 10, 9. Okay. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. That's 9 and 10. For the scripture says, 11, everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing his riches on all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And I have to say this because I don't know who it's going to touch, but as someone who, you know, fell out of faith in my teenage years, you know, I had a lot of hard things we were going through. My mom had to work two jobs. My dad got sick. And, um, you know, he, he had four bypasses. I almost died when I was 13. And this is just part of my story. You know, I got with some wrong friends and we would go to the bars, we, you know, and drink and it was just the wrong crowd to hang out with. And, you know, those are things that are mistakes made and, you know, um, and just hardships in my relationship with Blake and things that we went through. Cause I've known Blake since I was 17 and he didn't grow up in church. So not either I did, but he didn't, I mean, I did for a little bit, but not really. <laughs> I was, I knew of God, but I just didn't want anything to do with him. And from someone, I tell you that because it's a little bit of a testimony. You know, I tell you that because from someone who did those things and realized how good the Lord has been, how good and faithful he has been. You know, I moved two hours away from my old hometown and I'm glad that I did. He really, um, I don't know. I just, I moved out here to go to college and now I've stayed and, and I'm just, I'm thankful that I got away from that situation and the Lord just, I don't know, he just truly helped keep me safe and protection was over me and I didn't even see it. Even when I was in college, I was like, didn't want anything to do with him. I was so of the world. And I say this because at the end of the day, when I finally, at the age of 26, I was almost 26, coming back to know, I started, I, over the last the two years before that, I was kind of saying you know, but truly at the age of 26, that moment when I just, he revealed himself in such a way. And I, I know that I want you to know that that can be for you too. And um, no matter what you've done in mistakes you've made, he is for you. He is with you. He forgives you. And all you have to do is ask, all you have to do is ask that forgiveness because he is there. He is there. So you just say, hey, Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I ask you to forgive me. Come into my heart. Truly, I believe in you. Be my Lord and Savior. And ask him that in that prayer. Whatever prayer that is for you. There's no special prayer. Just truly mean that in your heart. And ask him to be your Lord. And he will be your Lord. He will reveal himself to you in that way. And I know he has for me. And even when I'm, I mean, it's not like you're going to, you do have this slate wiped clean. You know, he washes away our sin and he cleanses us with his blood, right? Um, but you're, and you still may sin, right? Going forward, it's not like you're never going to sin again, but you have Jesus with you. As you walk through your relationship with him, you will have this conviction and um, start to start to show. And, and it's just a growth process. You know, you will start to see 
all these different things and just get into his word. Y'all, I cannot stress that enough. There's so many seasons I went through where I haven't read my Bible. I admit that first to admit it. And every time I come back to here, this was such a blessing to read. Such a blessing to read. I know I didn't go all the way through here, but I think I, my point has come across, you know. Um, so it's just... He doesn't go back on his promises. He He's for us. He's the source, the means, the purpose for all things. He is the one under control in our lives. And if we trust in him, everything will be well, no matter what. And even if there are, we know we're going to have hardships and sufferings in this life because we live in a fallen world. There's so much of that. Yes, we do live in a fallen world. It doesn't mean you're not going to suffer. But when you do suffer, you're going to have the presence of the Lord to give you that peace and that comfort. And that is what is so important to me. And that's why I want to say that to you as well. So, yeah, I hope this has been okay. I hope I didn't get too emotional for you. But um, that's a little bit of my story tied in with uh try not to get too personal that was a little part more personal than i usually share but you know my past past life is like i just didn't say it i didn't want to say it i don't know what it was you know i uh, just you know and it's like the devil's really trying to get a hold of our younger generation and, and he's he's got a hold on so many people and just trusting in jesus is so freeing it's so freeing and so i just i hope that this has blessed you today you know i'm still growing in my faith every day i mean i've not read the whole bible i'm not saying i'm definitely not a perfect person at all you know i think that what i really loved about the part where it talked about the mark of the true christian where was that i meant to talk about that a little bit read romans uh 12 which is 12 9 through 21 I love that part. I actually drew that out at one point sometime. I don't know where that is, but um, it's really a great, just a great guide of how should we respond to persecution, mistreatment, overcoming evil with good, and blessing those who persecute us and do not curse them, rejoice with those who rejoice, weep with those who weep. The Lord will bring his own vengeance and that's not for us to take. Do not overcome evil with evil, overcome evil with good. That's a really great great uh, point in this as well so there's just so much in this to unpack in such a short time i know i probably talked 30 minutes on this already but uh, i hope that you were blessed by this your faith walk is a way to learn and having discernment in different things and that's another reason like me growing in faith and growing in my reading and discernment and content and what i want to read and what i want to put in my mind as i read you know i'm just truly working through a lot of that this year and since the beginning of my channel y'all have seen i feel like i've seen a lot of you have said such growth in 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 that and um, me just really trying to like tell you guys how things have been for me and be as honest and open as possible to help others. If I help one person, if I help one person, honey, it's worth it. So I love you guys. And that's it for the Romans chat. Um, <laughs> I don't even know what to do next in this vlog. I don't know what I'm gonna read next. I think I want to read uh, Philippians and then go back to Corinthians. I have read Philippians before and I loved it. When I, when I first came back to the Lord, it was the first one I read and I loved it and did a really good Bible study. I think Matt Chandler had a Bible study. It was called to live as, to live as Christ to die is gain. That, that's a scripture, right? So that was a really great study I did many years ago in 2016 that I still never forget. And I'll, I just always love Philippians. I'm probably going to read that in my next reading and then go to Corinthians. Um, you know, I'm just trying to focus on different books of the Bible as I go and all that stuff. So yeah, doing that. And then uh, I'm going to try to finish that Colin Coble audiobook today. I'll keep you all updated on that. And then I do have my book sleeve here, by the way. I've been using it. The one I talked about I got recently. So, um, oh, I didn't get to tell y'all. I completely forgot. Dude, I forgot to tell y'all. <laughs> the Hubs and I watched the first little bit of Pride and Prejudice last weekend. So, hopefully, we can finish it t this time. Hey, buddy. Come here. Yeah. You've been so good letting mama chat. You've been so good you've been sitting over there playing with your toy. We appreciate you, buddy. Anyway, uh, this is about my sign to sign off for a minute. But I will say we are watching Pride and Prejudice, the movie. The movie, 2005. Watch the first half. Hopefully we can finish it this weekend. So, yeah, hey, buddy. All right, that's my sign to sign off. I'll be back later. Hey, y'all. So, reading update. I did finish Break of Day. Five stars. Loved it. Loved the way they ended it. So good. Had light faith element, but just so on the edge of your seat, suspenseful. The family dynamic. I'm here. I really enjoyed it. Read this series. <laughs> Read this series is all I can say. Colleen Coble Girl. I've got a lot of her books on my shelf, so we'll see what happens next with it. But 
she definitely on my radar. So, loved it. And I uh, did get a book in the mail today that I ordered on Pango Books. Y'all, I love when Pango Books orders come with like that extra pizzazz, honey. We love to see it. So, like, they sent these cute little stickers with it, like little book. Ignore my nails, y'all. I have not got them done. I ain't gonna be getting them done no more, but we here. That's a whole other story. <laughs> so, just some cute little stickers. Thought that was cute. The book I ordered from there was The All-American by Susie Finkbeiner. Here right now. This is a new release. Paid $8 of Pango Bucks on it. So, I already had like my Pango dollars where I had sold some books. Just use those. So, really great deal since it's a new release. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to read this at some point. It's not like immediately on my radar, but several people have enjoyed it. And this is set in 1952. Nearly all the girls, Bertha Harding knows dream of getting married, keeping house, and raising children. But Bertha dreams of baseball. She reads every story in the sports section. She plays ball with the neighbor neighborhood boys. She even writes letters to the the picture of the Workington Sweet Peas, part of, part of the All-American Girls Professional Baseball League. When Bertha's father is accused of being part of the Communist Party by the House Un-American Activities Committee, life comes crashing down. So, I need to know what happens in this at some point. It's going on the TBR card because I need to read it. And um, a lot of people are reading it. There's a lot of buzz surrounding this book right now. Sounds great. Christian fiction, by the way. Christian historical fiction. So, I've never read that author either. So, I got that in the mail. I wanted to share that with you guys. And then, I think my next read is definitely going to be the masterpiece. So, at least start it. I don't know how far I'll get in it in this vlog. It's pretty thick. <laughs> I mean, it's what? How many pages is this? Almost 500 pages. So, I'm at least going to start it this vlog. So, yeah. I haven't really done that much else for this vlog. I've been cleaning. So, I did like tidy up a lot of my son's toys and things like that, honey. In the bin they go. Like, I was like... We were overwhelmed with toys, cards, all this stuff. So, yeah, I had to do a lot of tidying of that, but I didn't vlog it or anything. So, I've been real busy today. It's kind of raining right now. So, I'm gonna, I got the audiobook for this. Gonna listen to it while I clean and other things around the house. But I will report back. So, I'll see y'all. Hey, y'all. Final clip for the vlog because did I read? Did, did I read? No. <laughs> Busy, busy rest of the day. Was chitting chatting with some great friends and family stuff and dinner, spaghetti, you know, laundry. No reading happened. Uh, we watched Pride and Prejudice a little bit. I uh, still got like 30 minutes left, maybe 50 minutes. 50 minutes. Yeah, um, the hub was like, let's put this on for a minute, honey. I'm telling y'all, when he was watching this, he first was like, I don't know how watch this. And when he finally started watching it, he was like, you know, it was getting late one night, the first night. And he was like, five more minutes. <laughs> to have see so love in the movie. So he was like, let's put this on. We did watch an episode of Outlander, but yeah, we had to skip some stuff. I was like, okay, fast forward. Um, we've always watched the season since it first started. So like, kind of like, hey, let's watch it. <laughs> So, but we skipped through, like, I had access, so skip, you know, just give me the plot, you know, that I really want to see. And even then, I'm not loving this plot. Like, I just don't love it as much as I did, but anyway, that's neither here nor there. I'm not loving the plot. You know, I had my headphones in, I was like, I'm not even paying attention, except for a couple pieces here and there, but like. Did y'all hear that thunder? Y'all. Anyway, okay, anyway. We did watch an episode and it really wasn't that. This season's been more tame, but this episode had something I had to skip. I was like, roll my eyes. Anyway, that's pretty much it for this video, I think. I don't see myself tomorrow being able to vlog and it's really long enough already, but I am going to try to read through the masterpiece tomorrow. If it's not too emotional, if it gets to be too emotional, I have to put it down. We'll just see, but I'm gonna try. A lot of y'all were like, yes, read this. So, anyway, my shelves are in disarray. Plus, I'm gonna try to get this footage off my phone so I can film a couple other videos in the coming days. Um, You know, like my cozy mysteries that are sitting right here. Didn't get to do that today. I keep saying I'm gonna film this video. <laughs> to get this video anyway i love you all so much thank you so much for your support i hope this video really touched you and a lot of it was about romans uh and just a few th other things here and there but i hope this really blessed you let me know down in the comments below it's definitely a safe space here for you guys i love you all so much and i'll see you all in my next video bye y'all